Do you know you have a right? Every day, we complain about Nigeria, its challenges, unfairness, lack of opportunities, inequalities, and of course, non-representation by our representatives in government. We have so complained that we've become accustomed to a particular lifestyle. For example, when someone comes canvassing for votes, we say, when Ikuku gets there into power, he will not perform Jari. When we hear of a second Niger bridge being constructed, we say, government is lying. Which second Niger bridge them they built? When we see pictures of this build, we again say, these people are lying. It is Photoshop. When the journalists are taken to the grounds to visit the bridge, we say, bridge where them no go complete. When we see that the work is progressing after many months and years, we again say, the materials with them they use no be good one. That bridge no go last. I'm sure you get the picture. And I'm sure a lot of you, as you listen to me, will say, no mind them, na APC, na dem dem. Well, you're wrong. And these baseless accusations are responsible for where we are today. Once a statement does not align with your thoughts, beliefs, or understanding, we attach religious, tribal, or political leanings to it. That is the safe rallying point. That way, we get other lopsided, sentimental thinkers to join you in opposing what the person is saying or doing. No matter how relevant it is, but the picture I'm painting here is that Nigerians have become a bunch of complainants who like to talk, lament, but never seize opportunities to better themselves, no matter how low-hanging these opportunities may be. We only exist, we stopped living. We move around like we do not have a right. Again, we are quick to say, you know, see waiting them, they do show where everyone claim rights. I know that <laughs> standing for your rights with government is a tall but achievable order. There's a way to go about this, but that's a story for another day. For now, let me point you in this scenario. I had gone to a nearby kiosk to buy an item. As I walked towards the kiosk, I saw people standing idle. Getting to the kiosk, I realized that vendors were, the vendor rather, was having a heated chat with someone. Other people who came there were definitely livid. Faces turned red and obviously agitated, but they looked on and complained, waiting for minutes. After 30 seconds of waiting, I left. You know why? Because there were other kiosks in the corner who sold the same item. You see, Nigerians patronize a food vendor, a mama put, for example. They are unhappy with the service, complain of insufficient use of salt, yet they go back there every day and engage in the same round of complaints. I'm painting this scenario to emphasize our weakness as a people. We've become used to complaining while we continue to live an unhappy life. We offer advices which we need to other people and we never implement these same advices on our own. Lastly, before, okay, let's say this. Lastly, and believe me, this is truly a life story that happened to me last week. I had gone to a mobile network provider, I won't mention the name, to make an inquiry. When I got there, nobody was allowed into the compound, it was locked, we felt like we were at an embassy trying to get visa to travel out of Nigeria. And obviously, it, uh, people were unhappy. And, um, and obviously, uh, dissatisfied customer cried out, this government, sha. So I turned, I looked at him and asked, now government get this institution, he said, yes, now, banks, mobile companies, all of them are government cousin. <laughs> if we all decide to leave our network providers due to poor service, they will sit up. But no, we won't. Knowing that we won't, the network providers keep rendering terrible service. Have you noticed that multinational companies offer better services in their countries of origin than they do in Nigeria? Have you noticed that beverage companies offer diluted quality of the quality drinks they sell in other countries? We have a broken spirit. No wonder politicians take us and never take us seriously. We are a back worse than a bite. All right, so like I was saying, 
that telecommunication firm I told you of in their country, you'll be shocked or you won't be surprised that they will allow youths, young persons, undergraduates to come and participate in internship and then thereby transferring skills, international skill transfer. But in Nigeria, they come, they make a flimsy excuse that they have a high hybrid equipment and when it spoils, they need to get expatriate from outside to fix it. Therefore, they don't want a Nigerian undergraduate to work there. And the government will not say anything about it. The Nigerian government is supposed to tell them, if you want to do a business here, please make sure you're not only making money from the citizens, you're also contributing meaningful. You're impacting the life in different areas. It mustn't be only through entertainment. Mm -hmm. Everybody has rights. Your rights ends where another person's rights but, starts. But, but you see, when well, I agree with you, certainly, government should work. But you see, in other crimes as well, the people are active. The people could just decide to blacklist well, that company, and that's it. What we do as Nigerians, we don't take action, we complain, yeah. and expect a government that is faceless to do the work. I say faceless because there are so many facets of the government. Mm. Yeah. When you say government, it depends on the sector you are complaining complain about. about yeah. And there's something that people say, oh, the federal government, I don't want to call the name of the president, you know who. <laughs> and people go, so I will not ask people, okay, this issue is happening in your states. Yeah. Exactly. Your state is not Thank a Northern. You. Your state governor is not a Southern. Your state governor is, is from, from your states. states. Hmm. Your local <laughs> government chairman is from your local government. Even though they don't stay there all the time. But you get my point. The point is yeah. that is the person I will go and hold, exactly. not the president. So I know the presidency could, can do more, but some of our problems can be solved at granular levels, even mm -hmm. from our own yeah. end. So the problem with Nigerians is we won't change, but we don't want to take action. That's exactly. it. In anything, no. We buy the wrong stuff from Conga Jumia. We you. call Conga customer service and say, this thing I ordered is not what was delivered. It's work. We'll just be complaining around like that. Complain. that is I it. will call Conga <laughs> and they will come up. In the picking, it takes time, it takes effort. It's, yes. But that thing I have done will cause Conga to sit up and tomorrow they will be better. Mm -hmm. exactly. But when nobody complains, anything you don't complain about means it is all right. But I, I, but I know editor wants to say something, okay. but let me quickly paint this scenario. When, um, what was it called, National Health Insurance started in Ghana around 2003 or four, I'm not too sure, but around that time, I have a friend who went to the hospital, pre I mean pregnant, and was going through the process. And she was called to the Ghana and listen, if you want to burn your child, go pay, make you leave National Insurance. Home. No wow. bother yourself. Go wow. and pay and do your antenatal. But today mm. in Ghana, that same national insurance that my, this is not them, see, it's a friend that happened to. That same national health insurance scheme is one that when you go to the hospital and your card is expired, you just pay through mobile money and immediately it is activated. It's the same health insurance where when you use it, they send a text message to you immediately to ask if you're the one that used your card, if not, to report. But it started the same way Nigeria's insurance is. But what are people doing? Nobody's using it. Nobody, we're just complaining in our homes. Not even complain. complaining on TV. Complain. Any I'm sure any time to come comes I just want to yeah. add something. You know, um, oh, there was something that happened not too long ago while I was serving. Mm. I served in Onicha, Anambra State. I remember one day I was going to commute from Onicha to Oka, and then we had to board the Willy Obiano bus. Then they call mm. it Obiano bus. Mm. And then you see some people were jumping lines, you know, ni average mm. Nigerians. Yeah, some that's of it. them, they don't respect line. And mm. me putting on my coppers, uh, yeah. I came there. What is going on here? Oh, yeah, everybody maintain one line. And they came and said, Who are you? Are you the only copper in Anambra State? We are going to beat you up here. I told them, As far as I'm concerned, nobody is going to move this line. They try, 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 try. Imagine some comment member were telling me I was being foolish. Why didn't I just allow them? I said, no, huh. we have to do the right thing. That's I fought and fought and fought until to some extent to my strength can carry Take you, yeah. my, my strength carried me and we were able to maintain line. And then when we got into the bus, some of the passengers were telling me I was too, they use abusive word on me. Why some silently told me you did the right thing? You see? I wish we had somebody. Anyway, I won't talk to him because I know anytime you <laughs> do something. Go ahead, any talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Interestingly, I mean, all through well, when you were when you were talking, mm. Kayode, and with the discussions, all that kept on resonating within me was we have a broken spirit. Yeah, because we have trashed this issue in various platforms, mm. in various places. We talk about it every day, social media, small gatherings, large gatherings, about the Nigerian people, about governance, about everything. And I real and I kept on the question was, what exactly is responsible? You know how you need to go to the root cause of something? And I remember there was a documentary I said a few years ago about the Great Depression in Britain mm. and how at that point the same Britain, UK that we know today, 
people would actually to get a piece of bread they would actually literally almost beat each other Beats, yes, yeah. and I realized that maybe there's some answer some circle in that bro how do you heal the broken spirit of mm. people what about maybe one of the places that we need to start looking at is that we have a national psychiatric hospital and I don't mean that in a bad way <laughs> but I mean that the place of you know how people pay lip service to mental health mm. and healing because some of the actions and the things that we do and the reactions and the behavior patterns that we're looking at now are not just basic I mean on the face yeah, right. of it all yeah. because I was involved recently while talking I was being involved in a particular behavioral change campaign and initially it was just a matter of advocacy on TV but then even the funders realized that you need to look at paradigm shifts mm. these are not things that you just complain about or talk to pull out you need to look at how do you actually systemically change everything so maybe we're gonna to have to take a good look at our mental health institutions, institutions the national in that regard, and the big yeah. across board really really look at how what in governance how do you go to governance, you psychology it? as a you, people you, you, as solutions mm, policy changes true. everything everything is a system you're, you're right change. you're right you and, let and, men I die here too much in nigeria and but, it's important Felix, Those in the corridors of Felix, are not exempted. We, we, we can trash this. It's like you said, from mental health to, um, you know, even budgeting itself. <laughs> you, can, you can take it to any, any angle. But the bottom line is that you ask the question about how do we regulate this. And I think it starts with this kind of program. If you look at every country that has fallen into depression or gone off the radar, one thing they do is that they just end up having a group of people that decide there must be a change. Mm, yeah. And I think that's what we're saying today, that as Nigerians, we must change. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's ne certainly never uh, enough time to discuss issues on this platform, but we make do with what we have. Please don't just listen. Remember what they say. Rome was not built in a day. Play your part, even if it's just to share the advocate with family and friends. The more diverse thoughts we share, the richer, the solutions they inspire. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook. That's facebook.com uh, forward slash. Don't forget. <laughs> Sorry. Don't forget. <laughs> Take it around, don't forget. All right. All right. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook. That's plus TV Africa and hashtag. Advocates uh, NG and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocates NG and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now.